Really happy to be here, and uh, this is Jun Biao from Tsinghua University. And actually, I'm recently I'm moving from Tsinghua to the Center of Synthetic Biology Engineering Research at the Shenzhen Institute of Advanced Technology at the Chinese Academy of Science. And today, what I'm going to tell you is uh, one story, because uh, in the past several years, we have been always asked why you need to synthesize a genome, right? <laughs> As Jeff mentioned also in this morning, you know, why we want to do that? So hopefully today I'll give you a, a, a short overview why I want to do that. And the topic of today's talk is trying to is, uh, unlock the power of scramble with rescues. And that is a reporter system we actually designed to use the synthetic yeast and to do something, do some applications. As we all know, the synthetic yeast project is an international collaboration project. And within the project, my group is actually working on one of the chromosomes, the chromosome 12, and we synthesize it and, uh, by you know, different strategies and eventually published this year. So the next question is, okay, now we have that yeast strain with a synthetic, project, uh, synthetic chromosome, so what can we do with it? As we all know, there's one important feature in the synthetic yeast project, which is a scramble system. In short, scramble is just a lot of locks P sites which was integrated into the synthetic chromosome. The presence of the locks P sites allows us to really, you know, scramble or make a lot of variation of the genomes if we induce the query recombinase. That is, from a homogeneous yeast population, if we uh, induce the query recombination, and now we will eventually generate a population of cells. For each of them, they will have a different genome. So from that population, we can actually uh, select or identify many strains which we are interested in. In order to do this, so this is a one illustration that's saying that, you know, if we induce the query recombinations, you'll see most of the cells are dying because you can imagine, because there are so many rocks P sites within the genome and they will eventually hit the essential genes, allow them will not be able to survive. And also, you know, however, to use the scramble system is not so easy because if we induce the recombination, most of them will be dead. And within the survival cells, some of them are actually not scrambled. They are the still intact cells. So in order to overcome these problems, what we did, uh, another thing is that, sorry, another thing is that in order to select those scrambled cells, what we did previously is trying to look for those small colonies, which in, is an indicating of the genome is gets, you know, scrambled. However, this selection is not very reliable because we can select a lot of the cells and most of them sounds like just uh, gross, you know, phenotype differences. And in addition, what we did in the pre previously is trying to look for the loss of specific markers as the one showing here. This is uh, 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 MAT17 markers within the chromosome 12 and we did a scramble and we played the scrambled cells on a median, contain the, 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 the can, can, uh, a me a selecting media and looking for the loss of the marker. However, the efficiency to get that gene get lost is very low. So in order to solve this problem and uh, to select or identify a lot of those scrambled genomes, what we did is we tried to design a rescue system. So if we look at the LOXP sites we used, we used the LOX, symmetric LOXP site as shown here, and from this literature, we can see that this LOXP same site is uh, orthogonal to the LOXP site. Therefore, based on this literature, we designed a rescue system, the reporter of the scramble system, using the LOXP sites. We insert this LOXP sites, franking the, LOXP site, uh, franking the two markers with this LOXP sites, and put that into another chromosome location within the synthetic cells. So if there is a cre expressed within the cell and the recombination happens within the reporter system, it will switch the two autotrophic markers, and therefore you'll get a loo plus colonies and uh, they won't be able to grow in your cell. 
And since there are many, many of the locked piece sites, symmetric locked piece sites on the synthetic chromosome, therefore, once we have a clone which has the LU expressed, that means the locked P, uh, the recombination happened at this LU site, you can imagine there might be also same or uh, at least one or multiple recombinations also happened on the synthetic chromosome. Therefore, using this method, we can ensure every clone we picked up on this plate also contains some rearrangement on the synthetic chromosome. That leads us to get a lot of those, uh, you know, scrambled cells, and from those cells, we can identify the one we want. So, oops. So we use that as a test, and we initially we test if this system is uh, tight enough, and it is actually, you know, if you look at this one, so in here, without induction, you'll see nothing grows, and only if you induce this for 24 hours, you'll see this loop colony appears. And this is uh, just, uh, you know, induced different times. You can see more of those uh, loop plus colonies appears. So using this system, we actually scramble the chromosome 12, and then using, uh, you know, pick up those uh, rearranged chromosomes, the cells, and uh, as shown here, we pick up the five different strains and do a genome sequencing and to identify all the rearranged arranged regions within the synthetic chromosome, we can see all sorts of the modifications like the deletions, inversions, and the duplications. However, compared to the one published paper using the circular chromosome 9 arm, and we found that they are actually, for this linear chromosomes, the number of rearrangement is actually much reduced. And we also find a large, you know, inversions as shown in here, it's about 300 KB long. And then using this system, what we did is we actually do a proof of principle experiment to select clones which are able to grow in, uh, on the media contain 8% of the ethanols. And we identify clones and we test its growth in the ethanol contained media and they are growing better than the wild type or than the original strains, as shown in here, and also there's another clone which are more tolerant to higher content of ethanols. And those clones are actually, you know, produce more ethanols. And then, so this is allows us to identify those clones. So the next step is, uh, can we using the system to identify why those clones are able to resist to ethanol? So we are using one method as uh, we, you know, uh, also pro uh, reported recently, the POPM method, and we cross the ethanol tolerance strain with a Y-type strain and then do a sporulation and identify the spores which are resistant to ethanol and which are not resistant to ethanol. And then using a PCI tag analysis, we are able to identify which region of the synthetic DNA are actually correlate with this uh, ethanol resistance. That allows us to identify the region exactly where it is. And of course, we also did a high, you know, whole genome sequencing, which allows us to firmly confirm that in all of the ethanol resistant clones, they all contain a rearrangement at this region. Okay, this is involved in one of the LOXP mediated rearrangement at one gene close to the ACE2 genes. And obviously, then we tested it because it's possible it's defect due to the ACE2 or the RT2. And then we look at the transcription in this strains and looking for if the ACE2 will be affected or not. And it tells us, yes, the ACE2 transcription is affected. Once you have the arrangement happens, it will remove its three prime UTR, which allows to the transcription goes down really dramatically. And we tested by Western blot to check if the protein level is also affected, and it is. So therefore, that leads us to see, okay, this ACE2 are probably the reason for the ethanol tolerance. And then we also tested, uh, you know, if we completely remove the ACE2 genes, and are they will comfort the, the, the ethanol resistance as the, what the, you know, the, the, the string we identified, and it is, and then that result shows us, okay, we can using the scramble to identify the ethanol resistance strains, and we can also using the method we developed trying to map where are the, 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 the resistance they come from. So which is the mechanism of this uh, resistance? And we also probe and trying to understand 
or using the synthetic chromosomes to see is that possible to improve the chassis with the scramble system. So we actually integrate the beta carotene pathways at another lo chromosome location and to induce the scramble systems and then select the strains and trying to get some of those strains which are producing more of the beta carotene, <coughs> as shown here. And of course, we screened and we get quite a few different strains which are more producing more of these beta carotenes. And we are in the process of to identify why and what's the reason causes those uh, you know, clones producing more of those beta carotenes. And so this is one example. And we, oops, and we can also using the scramble system in combination of the rescue selection system to looking for some of the populations which are able to evolve more more faster than the, than the original strains. So this is just one example. We were putting the, the rescue system into a strain, and that in that strain, there will be leaky expression of this tree. And then we were putting a selection on that population. And once you have that leaky transcription, you'll see the cells population we got, they can actually glow better under this stress conditions. And now we are also in the process and trying to identify why this population uh, comfort this, uh, you know, salt resistances. So I'll stop here and uh, thank the person who did the work. And there's uh, one graduate student, Jiu Qing Luo and uh, Li Hui, they did m most of the work. And uh, Sun Yue and uh, Yun Wang from the BGI, they did the sequence analysis and uh, also the funding sources. I'll stop here and uh, take some questions. Uh, well, it's not exactly a question, but more like a comment. Mm -hmm. I think it can be really interesting to um, take some aspects of the previous talk where mm -hmm. you have the idea of relocating um, like thematic genes, let's say in that mm -hmm. case they were tRNA genes, but mm -hmm. you can imagine biosynthetic gene, uh, thi uh, genes that are involved in a ben metabolic process mm -hmm. or cancer genes or whatever, and relocate them to neochromosomes mm -hmm. and then have the scramble acting on the neochromosome mm -hmm. alone mm -hmm. and then putting that through um, a series of uh, phenotypic evaluations mm -hmm. to mm -hmm let's say, yeah. saturate that particular process and understand it more deeply. Yeah. With the cancer topic, it could be mm -hmm. really interesting. Well, in this case, in yeast would be like cell cycle genes, but it could mm -hmm. be really interesting because you would have like the classical amplifications or deletions, inversions, but you would have uh, many, many combinations of those uh, uh, kinds of events, and maybe we can learn something new. Yeah, that's brilliant idea. I think, uh, yeah, we actually doing something similar, but uh, not in the metabolic sites. We are doing some essential genes using the similar thing. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's a very nice idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, without. Thank you. <laughs>